career artists, people that are a little bit older, uh, work with uh, Sammy Hagar. I've been with him like for four or five years. Uh, Sech, Joe Cetriani, I did the G3 tour this summer. Um, I work with uh, Sheila E. I've worked with her for like 12 years. I worked with Colin Hay from the band Men at Work. Um, and I've worked with him for five or six years. And all, all these uh, are older people um, that don't, they don't want to spend a lot of time sound checking. Nobody likes to sit, don't. Doom, 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 Maybe if you're 19 years old and it's your first gig, you're happy to do that. <laughs> but once you've been on the road for a few years and you get, you know, after, uh, maybe even the first week you're excited about being out there. But after that, you're done. Sammy Hagar hates sound checks. I think it physically does something to his body. On the Chicken Foot Tour, we did seven weeks. I had one sound check and it was one song not even the full song. It's like a verse and a chorus and a verse, and he'll usually stop and he'll say, are you good? And the answer to that question is always yes. It's not, <laughs> no, play a little bit longer. That's not what puts me in good favor. Oh, all right, so can you hear all that out there? Okay, so I hear that I'm getting everything. Can you hear that I'm getting everything as well? It's mixed here. It's like what we're doing. There we one. <laughs> so now sometimes the effects channels and the uh, front of house channels are out of phase. So I can really spend time like kind of playing with these, playing with the different balances, checking the phasing, which one sounds better. You guys are out there so you can tell me which one sounds better. This is out of phase. difference in that, right? And we're rocking. We're ready for Colin to come down and check his ears. Europe. He, Paul was talking about bringing ADATs and having me sub mix stuff and things like that. And I thought, you know, I can just see like a, a great show that they're really excited about. And I've done a sub mix of the drums and the snare's too loud or the hi hat doesn't sound right. And there's no way to separate those. So I thought, we really, if he wants to do this, we have to multi track it completely. And I called Rick and he said, um, he, uh, uh, you can, I asked him, do you have a rig over in Europe you know, that we could use? And he said, well, how would you like to take out the new uh, Studio Live? And at first I thought, you know, I've never done a tour with Paul. And this is a $3,000 desk. And I'm going, and I've been on digital boards before that I've had problems with that have frozen up and things. And I thought, can it really be that good? And I, wor I worried a little bit. And, uh, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to take the board and I'll do the first show on it. And if it doesn't work, it's going to live in the trailer for the rest of the tour and I'm just going to use what they have in the house. But the, the first few shows I did, I was amazed with the way it sounded. It was great. And the ease of being able to, uh, to bring my own console every day and to have all my compressors set and everything, and then giving him his hard drive at the end of the tour. He's got a new album coming out. There's three tracks from that tour uh, on his new album using this board. Uh, Chicken Foot has a new album coming out. They're re-releasing their first album. They're using five tracks that we recorded this summer on this board. People ask me all the time, how good are the preamps? I mean, it's Joe Satriani. He's one of the top guitar players in the world, top tone guys. And he picked, they had all these live shows archived from two years ago, and they had a lot more of them. And he picked using the sounds of this console over and it was a profile console. Uh, they picked that, this over it because they thought this sounded better. So to me, that's a huge uh, ring endorsement. You know, the next time you get some 
some engineer who comes in or some band guy and says, oh, I'm not going to use that console. You can say, well, you know, it's good enough for Chicken Foot's album. It's good enough for Paul Gilbert. Sammy Hagar's used it twice. Uh, one for his solo album, one for a video shoot. So if it's good enough for those guys, I would imagine it's probably good enough for D.B. Coopers. <laughs> I always do it on the gig. I do it with an iPad because I can walk around each guy and say, hey, what, how you doing? Um, Y'all can see that? Yeah. So, um, yeah, here I set up. I just go to the aux mix, and there's um, Jeffrey's right there, and this is kind of like what he's listening at, and he just goes through playing, and hey, do you need any more of this? And uh, he, sometimes it's like, uh, give me a little more of the tongue. Or it's maybe it's a small room, and I got the snare in, and he doesn't need the snare, I'll just, I'll just pull it out. These guys are going to play a quick song, and then we're going to take a short break, and we're going to be into the next session, which is tracking a band live, and they're going to be our band as well. So uh, hopefully, uh, let's give it up for Papa Gross Funk, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> 